Hello and welcome to your yin and yang uh, flow today. So we're going to do a couple yin postures to start our practice. Uh, then we're going to move into a very gentle flow, uh, aiming for about 60% of our normal uh, e um, efforts. And then we're going to finish with yin again and some breath work. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. We're going to start with our first yin shape of being heart bench. So for this one, you're going to want two of your yoga blocks. You're going to place one on its mid setting towards the back of your mat. Imagine if you were laying down, it would be right where your shoulder blades land. And then the other one is going to be just a few inches behind it on a higher setting. So we can have some support through the back of the head. So go ahead and set your props up in a general area of where you would like to have them. And then as you start to come down, you might have to move the first block up or down a little bit. We want to avoid the rib cage and find just the very bottom of the shoulders. So if you feel any pinching or any kind of tightness into that spine area, you probably have it just a little too low. So I'll invite you to move the block up the spine a little bit closer towards the neck. And then the block behind that is gonna be on its high setting, just giving our head some support. So once you find your shape in your heart bench, just allow those arms to rest out, maybe like a 45 degree angle, maybe right next to the body, maybe even placing the hands gently on the torso. Just find a position that allows you to surrender into this shape, allowing the props to support you as the front body starts to open up and release. And then the legs can be however feels best for you. Maybe they stay bent. Maybe we extend them out. But if you straighten them out, just notice if that pulls into the low back any, it might be nice to just bring them right back into a bent position. And as you start to settle into the shape, let's start to bring our focus to our breathing. Bring your attention to the abdomen. Can you feel the rib cage expanding to the front and to the sides with each in breath? And then releasing with each out breath. Just using this gentle breath to support you help you stay grounded. Softening the toes and the fingers. Softening the muscle between the brows. softening the jaw. And our goal today is to let go and release. So whatever that might mean for you, maybe it's something you're going through in your life and I'll invite you over the next 45 minutes to just be present and to let that go. Maybe it's something physical, a twinge or pain in the low back or the hips. With that, I'll invite you to move your body in a way that helps restore and nourish that area. Take just a couple more breaths here. And whenever you're ready, 
to start to bring the hands next to the body and use that to push into the floor to lift you up and off of your props, being really intentional as we come out of that shape. And then I'll invite you at the top, maybe just to sit and notice the sensations that arise in the body. Maybe a more expansive, spacious feeling through the front body. Maybe the physical sensation of the blood rushing back into the back body where it was connected with our prop. And then whenever you're ready, finding some gentle movement to just come out of that shape as we prepare for our next. So we're gonna come into a version of butterfly for our next shape. So for this one, you might want a block or two and your bolster. And again, if you have a bolster, a firm pillow or some kind of cushion would be really nice. And you might also want a blanket depending on how your lumbar spine feels today. But we're gonna bring the bottom of the feet together. Now again, we're going for about 60% of our normal range of motion. So rather than pulling the heels towards the pelvis and being really engaged, go ahead and let them come out a couple more inches. So we still feel a little bit into the hips and the inner thighs, but it's not a pretty um, intense tug. And then place one of your blocks on ideally the high setting, maybe the mid setting, right in front of your toes. And then you're gonna take your bolster next to your pelvis and then the other end is gonna be on that block. So we're creating an upwards ramp, giving ourselves some support through the upper body. Now, you might also wanna place a blanket on top of the bolster if coming into this shape doesn't feel um, supported and you feel like you're straining at all. But once you have your setup, we're just gonna to start to round the spine, keep your sits bones connected with the floor, and then bring your forehead onto your prop whether that be the bolster or a blanket. And our goal here now is to release the back body throughout the thoracic spine and into the low back. So really find a rounding shape, thinking cat in cat cow, that big rounding, scooping out the belly, rounding the spine. And then let your head be supported on your props. So you can let your shoulders go, you can let your neck go. And you can really just surrender into this shape. And again, come back to that intention of letting go. So just notice in your body if you're holding tension anywhere that you can soften. Maybe it's in the hips or the legs. Start to let them feel heavy as they come towards the floor. Maybe it's in the neck or the shoulders. Can we soften that and let it melt more towards the floor? And again, maybe it's something mental. We're holding on to some kind of anxiety in life. You can allow that experience to be a part of your practice, but rather than clinging onto it and letting it control the thoughts, can you just let it be there with you as you focus on your breath and on the sensations that are presently in the body? Keep coming back to your breath. Sometimes the quiet can be the hardest thing to hold on to. We want to keep our minds busy and going. But can you just quiet that little monkey brain that 
constant thinking. Just tap into a little bit more breath. And take another breath here. And then before you do anything, I want you just in your imagination to visualize your spine and your back. And in this imagery, as the vertebrae start to stack, allow the body to follow physically stacking one vertebra at a time as you slowly roll up, releasing the back until the shoulders stack over the hips and the head on top of the shoulders. And then go ahead and start to dismantle your ramp, setting your bolster off to the side and your block off to the side as well. And we're gonna find just a gentle flow just to keep tapping into this, this yin aspect, this rest and digest, this uh, parasympathetic nervous system. So however you wanna get there, we're gonna meet in a standing at the top of the mat. So maybe you roll onto the knees and then untucking and coming into a down dog first. Maybe you just come right into standing. But however you wanna get there, take your time. And be really gentle with the body. And we're gonna go right into our flow. So at the top, focusing on that breath, take your time, inhale, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, gently bring your hands to your heart. We're gonna just shift the weights more into the right foot so we can step our left foot to the back of the mat. Not the fullest range again, but just about 60%. So it's not gonna be all the way back, we'll say pretty lifted. Rotate that foot off and straighten the legs as you come into about 60% of your normal triangle pose. So just letting that right hand reach towards the right foot, left arm reaching up towards the sky and feeling the spaciousness through the hips, through the side body and through the chest. And again, we're not going into full triangle, so probably not touching the floor, the hips aren't all the way back. And then as you inhale, reach the arms overhead, pivot your right foot towards that long edge of your mat, and then bend the knees just softly. As you do that, feel the pelvic floor tucking under just a little bit for some low core engagement. And then we're gonna pivot our left foot to the back of our mat, bending that knee and coming into a little version of extended side angle, finding some spaciousness through the right body and then slowly releasing our hands down towards the back of our mat, pick up your right heel so all 10 toes are facing the back of the mat. And as gently as you can, step that right foot next to the left foot and come into a forward fold. As you inhale, press through the feet and reach all the way up, coming into standing. Exhale, hands to heart. We're gonna circle around the other way. So shift the weight into the right foot again. Step your left foot back. Rotate the heel out, straightening out the legs and come into your 60% version triangle. As you inhale, reach the arms up, pivot the feet out, sink a little bit into the knees and into the hips. And then coming back towards the top of the mat, Pivot the right toes, place your left forearm on the left side, come into your version of extended side angle. And then slowly unravel the hands to the floor, pick up the right heel, so all 10 toes are facing the front of the mat. And then gently step your right foot next to your left foot and fold over yourself. Inhale, coming all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. This time, shift your weight gently into your left foot, stepping your right foot back, 
opening up into your 60% triangle. Rotating the feet out, sink into your little horse goddess pose. And then coming to the back of the mat into your extended side angle. Right forearm to thigh, left arm reaching overhead. And then slowly unravel, bringing everything to the floor. Pick up your left heel, toes facing forward, and then gently step your left foot right next to your right foot, coming into a standing forward fold. Inhale, reaching back up. Exhale, hands to heart. Shifting the weight into that left foot again, picking up the right foot, gently stepping it back opening up the hips by pivoting the feet and coming into that triangle. Feeling the side body stretching through the right and contracting through the left. Reaching the arms overhead, pivot the feet to face out, sink into the knees a little bit. And then pivoting back to the top of the mat, coming into that extended side angle. And then unraveling towards the floor, picking up that left heel, all 10 toes facing forward, and then step your left foot to meet your right foot. Inhale, reaching all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. We're gonna flow to that again. And this can be the exact same flow to start to match your breath with your movement, tapping into that parasympathetic nervous system. So shifting the weight into the right, left foot comes up. Gently stepping it back, opening into triangle. The inhale, opening up to this long edge of your mat, bending the knees. Exhale, pivoting to the back of the mat for that extended side angle. Inhale, slowly releasing everything facing the back of the mat. Exhale, step your feet together. Inhale, slowly coming up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, shifting the weight into your right foot again. Exhale, stepping our left foot back, opening up. Inhale into your triangle pose. Exhale into that horse goddess, bending the knees. Inhale into that extended side angle. Exhale, lower, pick up that back heel, step the feet together. Inhale, root to rise, coming all the way up to stand. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, shift the weight into the left foot, stepping our right foot back, opening up into triangle. Inhale, horse goddess. Exhale, back of the mat, extended side angle. Inhale, unraveling, picking up the heel. Exhale, step the feet together to the back of your mat. Inhale, root to rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, right leg comes up. Exhale, step it back. Inhale, open up triangle. On the out breath, pivot the feet out, bend the knees. Transitioning into that extended side angle. Unraveling at the top of the mat, picking up that left heel, stepping the left foot to meet the right foot, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise. Exhale, hands to heart. We're going to take a moment at the top of our mat. I'm going to flow through that one more time. I invite you, if you know the flow, those, those three moves that we're going through, those three asanas, to let your breath guide your movement. So don't get caught up in the thoughts or what's happening or even focusing on the shapes and what it should look like. Let your breath tap into that yin, that rest and digest. So we'll start the inhale. Inhale, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, hands to heart. Weight into the right foot. On the breath, transitioning into your triangle. 
taking your time breathing into that horse stance moving with your breath maybe you're faster or slower than i am but just keep working through these three different shapes until you get to the back of your mat and not overthinking it but really think of the breath as guiding you through this flow one more time on the right side so we'll be facing the other side of our mat now stay with your breath And then doing that same thing by leading, shifting weight into the left. Let your breath guide you. Be tapping into that restfulness with your breath. Come all the way back around, taking your time if you're still working until you come back to standing at the top of your mat. No rush to get there. But whenever we're back at the top of the mat, we're going to meet in a seated posture. So. Again, whatever that looks like to you. Maybe you come through a yogi squat. Maybe you just come to seated through a vinyasa. Whatever you need. But we're going to come into a seated staff pose next. So for this one, it might be nice to have your block. But rather than rounding and folding, we're gonna find a hinging from the hips. So normally we would sit and hinge with flexed feet. I'm gonna invite you to soften the legs. So maybe you wiggle out the feet, whatever you need to let that happen. But let go of all this muscular engagement in the legs. We're gonna lift our chest up, stacking everything over the hips. And without rounding, just hinge from the hips as far as you can. Now, if you start to engage the legs to support this fold back off just a little bit, because again, we're just going for that 60%. So it might not be a huge hinge here. We want to feel a little bit of release through the front hips, a little bit of contraction, and then some release through the low back. So our goal here is to lead with the heart, hinging from the hips without adding in muscular engagement through the legs. So let the legs be soft. Hands are either on the floor or on the blocks, just giving you some support. And it might be helpful if it feels safe and comfortable to do so to allow the eyes to close. Maybe that just helps you to rest a little bit deeper.
And just notice as we're here, if the legs are getting more tense, that we can soften that and let that go. And really find this release through the low lumbar spine and where it connects with the hip. Take another breath here. And then slowly start to lift up and out of this hinge. Go ahead and set one of your blocks up to the side. We're gonna transition into a child's pose with a little acupressure spot in the forehead. So place your block towards the top of the mat on its mid setting, and then coming into child's pose. Now, if your hips are tight, and maybe a traditional child's pose, your hips don't find your heels, you don't have a physical connection. It can be really nice to take a blanket, a folded blanket, and place that right on top of the heels. So your hips have that connection and they can really release rather than having to use your hip strength to hold yourself up. So if that feels like it might, sounds like it might feel good for you, I'll invite you to start there with that blanket on top of the heels um, and underneath your hips. From here, we're gonna slide the upper body out, placing this block right with that edge along your brows. So that little edge of the, of the block is gonna be right on the brow, so your entire forehead is supported. Now the arms are gonna be softly bent, giving you some support on the floor. So rather than active and reaching, we're just gonna let them be soft. And then from here, just find a gentle rock side to side along that brow line. And this is a really nice spot in Chinese medicine for acupressure. This communicates with your uh, nervous system, telling it to relax, to calm down, to settle. So on especially anxious days, this can be really nice to come back to. So I invite you now just to notice the sensations of this acupressure spot and your breath. Take a moment to look inward to be introspective and to see how it feels. Maybe it's an immediate effect and you already feel a little bit more rested. Maybe it's a practice that will take time. Now slowly start to slow your rocking down until you come all the way to a stop. Take a breath in and out. And then slowly start to lift up off your prop, walking the hands in closer towards the body and set your block off to the side. 
If you had your blanket, go ahead and also release that. And we're gonna transition onto our sit bones. So however you wanna get there, maybe you cross the legs behind you, maybe you kick them out to the side, whatever feels the best. And then we're gonna come into a supported bridge to open up the hip flexors, the psoas, and that entire region. So coming all the way onto your back, making any adjustments you might need. Getting comfy. <laughs> Go ahead and bend the knees, feet are flat on the floor. Now I'm gonna invite you to have the block on the lowest setting, but depending on your front body, you might wanna try the mid setting if you're really open and mobile. But we're gonna slide this block on its lowest setting right underneath the sacrum and the tailbone area. So make sure it's really supported, make any adjustments you need so you feel really supported through your hips. And then we're gonna extend our legs out long. So if you extend them out and you feel like you're rolling off the block, you might want to just readjust it and come back in. I like to place the hands on my body, but you might like them down by your side or maybe even reaching overhead. Now you don't have to physically look, although it might help, but just in your mind's eye, just try to see if your toes are pointing up towards the sky or if they've rolled off to the side naturally with the hip rotation. Can we pull the toes up so they're pointing right towards your ceiling? And you'll feel this release through the front body, through the hips. So feel that grounding through your sacrum and your tailbone and the spaciousness through the front body, specifically the hips and where they connect with the torso and the legs. And once you find your shape and you settle in, just come back to your breathing. Nice, easy inhales and exhales. And then coming out of this can be a little intense in that back body, specifically after it's been in this back bending shape for several minutes. Well, at first, just bend your knees and place your feet flat onto the floor without doing anything else. And then tuck your pelvis somewhat under so you feel a little bit of roll and lift off your block first. And then lift just enough that you can slide the block out from underneath of you. And then from there, one vertebra at a time, unravel back towards the mat. And then before you go to hug the knees into the chest, because that is a lot of our natural response, just rock along the sacrum, kind of windshield wipering your knees side to side, feeling that gentle nourishment through that back spot. And then we're gonna finish our class today with some breath work and a gazing meditation to calm the mind. But if you're craving a more traditional Shavasana, 
go ahead and find yourself in whatever supported Shavasana feels good. Maybe you even lay on your side rather than laying on the back, but whatever feels good. But if you'd like to come up for the breath work and the meditation, we're gonna be in a seated posture. I like to place an edge of a blanket underneath my tailbone just to give my spine some natural support. And then for the gazing meditation, it can be nice to have a physical thing to look at. So maybe we place a block or uh, something that's non-distracting just a couple inches in front of us on the floor. So it's there for us when we get ready. But for now, I'm gonna invite you, whether you're laying down or whether you're seated, to gently close the eyes if that feels safe to do so, or if not, just softening the gaze to limit distractions. And now we're gonna to start to focus on the breath. So it'll be a rhythmic breath to just tap into our restfulness. I'll say in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, hold. So I just invite you to stay with me through this rhythmic counting. So to clean the slate, take a nice big breath in and a nice big breath out. From the bottom of the exhale, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, Hold two, three, four. In two, three, four. Hold two, three, four. Out two, three, four. Hold two, three, four. Take a nice big breath in and a nice deep breath out. Allow yourself to land and just start to bring your gaze upon your gazing object, whatever your anchor is going to be. Ideally, something that's not distracting. And just start to focus on this object. Now, as we stay, it's very natural for thoughts to start to arise, for our mind to want to race onto other things, and it's okay to let that happen. In fact, let that be a part of your practice. But let those thoughts be like water in front of you, like a river, just flowing by. You're not attaching or clinging onto any of them. They're present, but you're not attached to them. And just softening your gaze onto this object, using that as your anchor to allow the mind to stay holding onto one thing.
From here, slowly start to deepen your breath. When it feels good to do so, maybe start to add in some movement physically, fingers and toes wiggling, circling the neck or the shoulders, whatever you need to just start to become a little bit more aware. And then if it's in your way, feel free to set your gazing object off to the side, setting the hands in the lap, gently roll your shoulders up, back and down. And then as you leave them down, let the ear fall to the shoulder and let the chin pass through towards the chest over to the other side. And do that one more time. And then coming back up through center. Thank you so much for joining me for this yin and yang blended class. I hope you feel a little bit more rested, restored and nourished. And until next time, be well.